Grain, a former economic advisor to the President of the European Commission. He joins us from London. We have Volker Stanzel, a German diplomat and former German ambassador to China and Japan. He joins us from Berlin. And we have Yanis Kotsomitis, a Greek journalist, joining us from Athens. Thanks to all of you for joining us. Let's start in Berlin. Ambassador Stanzel, as we just heard from our reporter, there was a meeting just before the weekend, but still no deal. What, in your view, is the main issue that are dividing the two sides and preventing them from coming to some kind of agreement? Well, you see, the new uh, Greek government, of course, is on the path of brinkmanship. It wants to get the best deal that's possible. That is completely legitimate and understandable. But, of course, uh, those who pay, uh, those who uh, are asked to uh, give new loans to Greece, want to be sure that the rules are being kept that uh, the deal that has been made in the past in order to uh, come to a bailout are really followed. And the Greek government so far has not made uh, proposals that have, been seemed, that have seemed acceptable uh, to their European partners. So um, in my view, I think the discussion will continue up to the last moment. The last moment is 12th of May, uh, when the Greeks will have to pay $750 million. Philip, do you agree island. with that, that uh, Greece is engaging in brinkmanship here, yeah? and also the fact that it has been non, not very cooperative with its European partners in paying back these loans? You've accused Germany, for instance, of bullying Greece. Tell us more about that. Well, Germany clearly has been bullying Greece since the start of this crisis. Uh, back in 2010, it was clear that Greece's debts need to be restructured. Uh, but in order to avoid losses for French and German banks, instead we engage in this pretense that actually it was merely going through temporary funding difficulties. And for the far past five years, uh, Greece has struggled with the burden of an unpayable debt. And Greece is right to be wary of uh, Eurozone governments. Uh, they promised uh, the Greek government that they would give it debt relief once it achieved a primary surplus, which, which it has done. Uh, and now they've set a new set of conditions, uh, which are reforms, a list of reforms which to me seem mostly designed uh, to force Syriza to break its election promises and therefore undermine its domestic, domestic popularity rather than being anything uh, that is really necessary uh, for unlocking the next tranche of money, which, it should be said, merely is going to be recycled back uh, to the IMF uh, and the ECB and therefore provide uh, hardly any benefit at all to Greek itself. Yanis, Greece has fulfilled part of the deal, as Philippe just pointed out. It has got to a primary surplus, uh, which was called for in the initial agreement. What are the options for Athens right now? I mean, are we seriously looking at a default and possible departure from the Eurozone? Well, uh, the, the Syriza government and uh, their partners, uh, independent uh, Greeks, uh, don't have a mandate from uh, their election to take Greece out of the Eurozone. The electorate mandate was to negotiate, negotiate really hard with uh, the creditors and get the best deal available. Uh, there were some uh, polls yesterday uh, published in the newspapers which showed that the, the people are ready to get to, to have a good uh, positive response for a compromise for the government. And uh, today, uh, Prime Minister Mr. Tsipras made a reshuffle of the negotiating team and uh, sort of uh, put uh, Mr. Varoufakis, the finance minister, on the sideline and uh, has put uh, the former uh, Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs, Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Tsakalotos, as a coordinator of negotiations. Right now, the uh, Greek government has uh, a political problem. It uh, has uh, to show to the people that it uh, is respecting the, their uh, pre-election pledges, but on the other hand, it uh, does not have a mandate to take Greece out of the Eurozone. Greeks, by more than 80 percent, support the uh, country's membership in the Eurozone. So there is a, a very delicate balance right now for Mr. Tsipras to get the best deal possible from the negotiations and still uh, come with, uh, save his face to the Greek electorate. Ambassador Stansel, go ahead. Yeah, well, uh, I think Yanis, Yanis has uh, really put his finger on the spot. The problem that um, is, uh, the, the Greek government is facing is that the people want to stay inside the euro, uh, but uh, the way the um, Greek government is pursuing the negotiations might lead to a Brexit indeed. And that is not something 
that anyone wants, neither the government nor uh, the uh, European partners. Now, um, to um, uh, um, leave emotions aside, I think um, if we look at what the Greek government, the Greek governments, even before Syriza have done, is to really try very hard to alleviate the suffering that is a fact in uh, Greece. But have they done enough in terms of reforms? I think we need to compare to what the Irish have done, what the Portuguese have done, what the Spanish have done. They have implemented reforms of the same kind that now European or Euro governments are asking from the Greeks. And they have been fairly successful with that. So I think even though it's extremely hard and understandably hard for the Greek government to implement some sort of reforms, I think uh, there's no other way. Yeah, go ahead, Philip. That is actually dis that's actually disingenuous. I mean, you're conflating two issues, which is one, um, uh, the level of debt, and two, uh, the amount of reform. You know, the reason why Ireland is doing well now is not because it's reformed a lot. Actually, it already had uh, one of the most flexible uh, and dynamic economies in Europe before the crisis. Uh, it's because it happens um, uh, to have a more bearable level of debt, and therefore markets are willing to fund it. Uh, and it happens to ha have booming export markets in the US and the UK. Those are not things which Greek uh, depo disposes of. More importantly, you know, we've had five years of an EU IMF program for Greece, and never has there been this emphasis on reforms. On the contrary, the emphasis has been on just keep up the pretense uh, that you're solvent, keep meeting the austerity targets, and we'll provide you with more money. Now, suddenly, the goalposts get shifted uh, when Syriza gets elected, which is we need reforms now, and we need a whole list of things. And the only reason this is being insisted on, as I said, is in order to try and undermine uh, Syriza politically. So you can quite understand why Syriza doesn't take in good faith um, uh, all the demands uh, of its Eurozone governments. Now, even more importantly, there is nothing logical or legal uh, about the idea that debt restructuring or default equals Euro exit. In fact, the EU treaty makes no provision for countries to leave the euro and there is no reason why uh, Greece's debts could not be written down as indeed they already were the private ones in 2012 while remaining within the euro. If the decision uh, to, to, to force Greece out of the euro is made it will be a political choice by eurozone governments and indeed an illegal one. Regarding uh, what Philip said uh, it's uh, I, 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 I agree with him that Focus has been set mainly on uh, austerity and fiscal uh, uh, re restructuring in the re recent years. Right now, there has to be some uh, reforms. There could be a compromise in which way uh, Syriza may agree to uh, reform the tax system, which is really, really bad shape, and also reform also how to collect taxes and how to restructure the state because also the state is in very bad shape. But right now, uh, Greece has a uh, pension system which is in the verge of collapsing, and also it's still, uh, the labor market, it's still not flexible enough to have new investors come in and make uh, new jobs. Uh, so right now, I think Syriza might need to compromise on a couple of issues, which could be consolidate, or maybe reform the pension system and especially some very strange cases in the pension system and also have a more flexible system for uh, privatizations and for the uh, labor market. On the other hand, uh, it's, it's common ground here that no, no more uh, fiscal adjustment can pass the Greek parliament. It, it has been absolutely very hard for the people to, to sustain all this uh, suffering of uh, cuts uh, but on the other hand, I think the creditors are ready to agree to lower levels of uh, primary surpluses for the next few years. The problem is, in the next years, Greece's debt is more or less uh, the IMF loans and the, the, the Greek bonds that are being held by the ECB and the other central banks of Europe. So there has to be some sort of arrangement with the IMF and the ECB via ESM or some other mechanism to take some load off in the next few years. 
because need, Greece needs some fiscal space in this year and the next three or four years in order for the economy to grow again and to revive uh, and get new jobs. Uh, I apologize. I fully agree with Yanis, and I wanted to make the point that I agree with Philip when he says that there's no reason uh, to force, no basis to force Greece out of the Eurozone. If uh, Greece leaves the Eurozone, it's its very own decision. A default without leaving the Eurozone is absolutely possible, even though it will be very painful. I fail, however, to detect the logic in what Philip has said before, that there is a sort of um, common denominator by other Eurozone governments uh, to ask Greek, Greece uh, things uh, it cannot deliver. Uh, the Eurozone governments have paid a lot of money so far. They are all aware that uh, Grexit, or even a default inside the Eurozone would be catastrophic. Catastrophic, first of all, for the Greeks themselves, secondly, for the reputation of the Euro, and lastly, for the European Union as a whole. So there's no interest at all in asking things of the Greeks they cannot deliver, uh, to the contrary. And I think what happened uh, before the last weekend, uh, the discussions uh, taking place among the ministers of finance of the Eurozone uh, are a case in point. Uh, all have, I think, come a long way in uh, trying to accommodate uh, Greeks needs, Greece's needs. Back to our program. We're discussing the ongoing Greek crisis. Joining us again to discuss this is Philippe Legrain, a former economic advisor to the president of the European Commission. He joins us from London. We have Volker Stanzel, a German diplomat and former German ambassador to China and Japan, joining us from Berlin. And we have Yanis Koutsoumitis, a Greek journalist joining us from Athens. Thanks again to all of you for being with us. Let's start in Athens this time. Yanis, Greece has asked the Russians for help, and we know that the relationship between the Russians and the European Union right now is not the best. What can Russia do for Greece? Well, uh, Greece, uh, the, the new Greek government uh, has uh, pledged to forge uh, new ties with Russia. Greek-Russian relationship has not been in a very good uh, shape in the past years. So, uh, on the one hand, uh, Greece can certainly and should certainly uh, forge a better relationship with Russia. On the other hand, there is this uh, gas dispute between the uh, European yeah. Union and Russia regarding the, the pipelines. Oh. You know, there was this uh, project, the South Stream, which was cancelled last year because uh, there is a problem with uh, monopolies of uh, Gazprom uh, that is also a network, a distributor and also a supplier. So there will be, uh, there is a new project right now called Turkey Stream and uh, Greek Prime Minister and Russian President Mr. Putin have discussed about uh, Greece being a major hub in this new uh, pipeline. But all this has to come through European Union and uh, European Commission uh, uh, approval. And uh, that was also the, what uh, Gazprom's CEO, Mr. Miller, said a few days ago when he visited Athens. He said, uh, we're willing to go ahead with this great project with Greece, but uh, it has to be approved by European Union. So on the one hand, Greece wants to be a sort of link between European Union and Russia regarding energy, and also uh, wants to forge new ties and also maybe get a chance to bypass the embargo on the agricultural products that has hit uh, the Greek uh, producers quite well. But this is something that has to go step by step, and the, 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 the scenario that Russia could support uh, Greece financially in the short term, I think this is a very long shot. This is something that even the Greek government has uh, come to realize it is not going to happen quite soon. Ambassador Stanzel, what do you make of that? Can Greece turn to Russia? Can it bypass the structures of the European Union, go to Russia in a bilateral conversation, and how will the Europeans react to that? Well, certainly it cannot completely bypass uh, uh, the European Commission because it depends on decisions taken in uh, Brussels. Um, but what it can do is uh, sort of bypass in some way the agricultural uh, sanctions. But, I mean, these are of minuscule importance, both to Russia and also to Greece. So I think 
the European Commission in the end would tolerate that because it's a way uh, to alleviate the, the uh, situation that Greece is in. Now, as far as the Gazprom uh, deal is concerned, uh, I think Yanis has uh, put it quite rightly uh, with all its problems. More on the general uh, uh, plane, I would say that um, if Russia is ready to put money into Greece, it can only be in, this, in the shape of a, another loan. Now, would Russia put its money, throw its money into a bottomless pit? It wouldn't. It needs something in return. It needs some sort of security to get the money back or to get something else in return. What could that be? Can Greece help Russia politically? There's hardly anything that uh, Greece can deliver. Economically, it's extremely difficult. So while in principle, I think if anyone, Russia or maybe even China, is welcome as an investor in Greece, um, Russians and Chinese will look at the viability of investments uh, they might um, entertain in Greece just as much as um, German, American, British investors do. Philip, what do you make of the possibility of Russian help uh, for Russia? Uh uh, for Greece. Uh, Russia itself, as we know, is under pressure right now. It's facing sanctions from the European Union as well as from the United States. Is this one option that the Greeks could be looking at? Well, let me just briefly correct what the ambassador said about the, the huge amount of help he said European governments have given Greece. Uh, actually, European governments have primarily bailed out uh, French and German banks uh, and by refusing to write down Greece's debts, imposed on it the worst depression that any country has suffered since the 1930s. So uh, I think the Greeks could do without more assistance uh, like that. Clearly, uh, until uh, Greece's debts are written down to a sustainable level, uh, I don't see that Russia is going to be willing to provide large-scale uh, assistance. Uh, and what if uh, Greece's debts were written down, uh, there wouldn't be much benefit for it turning to Russia. So no, I don't see Russia being uh, a solution uh, to uh, Greece's problems. Um, you know, it's, it's possible that there might be you know, some kind of token uh, amount of cash in return for um, some kind of political concessions. Uh, but frankly, I don't think that that's the way forward for Greece. Yanis, there is one other country that uh, Greece could turn to for help, and that is China. We know that China has already invested quite heavily in Greek ports. It has trade ties with Greece already, and Beijing has significant foreign currency reserves. Could China help the Greeks out? Well, uh, history tells us that uh, also in uh, 2010, when former Prime Minister Joseph Papandreou uh, visited uh, Peking and Beijing and uh, asked for help, uh, the Chinese government uh, suggested that the Greek government should turn to the IMF. And uh, I, quite frankly, I, I don't believe that the Chinese government would bypass the IMF and the European Union partners especially uh, with the relationship that the Chinese government has with the German government. And, uh, but what, could do, uh, what they could do is uh, push hard for the privatization of the Piraeus port, which is of great significance both for the Chinese government as a hub for Chinese imports in the southeastern Europe. And also the Greek government is right now, I think, is willing to make this deal for Piraeus and also maybe for some other state entities that the Chinese government would be willing to invest in Greece. So, uh, quite frankly, I don't believe there would be a, a straight financial help, but in terms of investments, yes, I see there is great space for cooperation between the two countries. Philip, given these realities that Greece is facing right now, um, do you see Greece remaining in the Eurozone and at the same time getting some kind of debt relief? I mean, do you see a grand plan yet, a strategy on the part of the Greeks to move this forward? Well, I mean, I started off optimistic that it was rational for both sides uh, to reach a deal given that both countries, uh, both the Eurozone governments and Greece, wants to remain in the Euro. That said, as time has gone on, uh, I've become more worried uh, that a deal is not going to be possible uh, and that uh, either by accident or by design uh, that Greece could end, again, end up outside the euro. Um, uh, I, I, still think, I still think there's the possibility of a deal. I still think um, uh, that uh, you know, if push comes to shove, Angela Merkel will not want to be blamed for pushing Greece out. Uh, and potentially uh, fracturing uh, the euro. Because there's this delusion at the moment in Europe that somehow you could push Greece out of the euro and that it would be costless. 
it would be cost in fact it would be very costly financially because uh, Greece would renege on its debts uh, and its target two liabilities economically because suddenly there would be a new uncertainty premium hanging over uh, other crisis hit countries that potentially if push comes to shove they could end up outside uh, as well and of course politically because we've been told that uh, Grexit would be the the end of the world as we know it for Greece but if in fact it proved to be less bad than people fear then you could see political contagion to places uh, like Portugal, Spain, Italy, even France uh, where there are large movements that are against the euro and last but not least, as we've been discussing, there's geopolitics. So I think that you know, Angela Merkel is, is a stateswoman. She sees the bigger picture, and, and I hope that reason can prevail. Ambassador Stansel, very quickly, we're running out of time. What happens next? What are the next big deadlines that are looming that we should watch for? 12th of May, when another bill is due uh, for, Greek to pay, for Greece to pay. And until then, uh, discussions will continue. I quite agree with uh, Philip. I started also out as an optimist too. I have turned more a pessimist, unfortunately. But I don't think either uh, Eurozone governments wanting to push out uh, Greece nor Greece wanting to leave the Euro. So there will be a compromise, even though it may unfortunately be a poor one at the end.